Hello and welcome back to An Old Man Watches and today I'm going to be talking about the 1987 horror film Lurkers uh, and our main character in this movie is a young woman named Kathy Barrett. Uh, Kathy had a pretty terrible childhood. She had an abusive mother who ultimately murdered her father uh, and the neighbouring kids once tried to choke Kathy with a skipping rope. Um, which is pretty impressive really, those kids should be on the rodeo circuit earning their fortunes with their rope trick skills. Now she's grown up, however, Kathy feels she's put a difficult past well and truly behind her. She's a professional musician, she's engaged to a photographer, everything is fine. I mean, yes, it's true that she still has bad dreams and they've been getting worse lately, but that's probably just due to the stress of her upcoming nuptials and the worry over whether her brother, who seems to blame her for their father's death, will attend. Surely once the big day is finally over, everything will go back to normal, right? Well, unfortunately for Kathy, this is not that sort of movie. Dark forces are at work, and she is at the heart of their plans. So Lurkers was directed by Roberta Findlay, who apparently got her start in film as a cinematographer on pornographic movies of the late 60s and early 70s, uh, soon moving into directing uh, such fare, often under a male pseudonym. And then in the early 70s, uh, she also began branching out into horror movies, uh, again, first as a cinematographer, um, but you know, generally still doing the porn thing uh, very much as her main line until the mid-1980s when the rise of video made low-budget horror production much more viable. Uh, she directed six horror movies, uh, often serving as cinema photographer on them as well, over the latter half of the 80s. Now, you've probably not seen any of the movies she made, uh, but if Lurkers is an indica indication, you won't have missed much by not seeing them. But let's delve into why this film misfires. So, first off, it's a very static, rather lifeless film on two main levels. Uh, the first level is Findlay's direction. It's technically competent, I'll give it that. Everything that should be in shot is in shot. The focus and lighting are solid. All those basics are covered. Uh, but there's just not any flair to it. It consistently feels like she's just pointed the camera at the actors and let them run their lines. Uh, in a film that's relying so heavily on attempting to create atmosphere, that's not really suitable. More th thought needed to go into the composition of scenes and shots. The quest for atmosphere brings us to the second level of lifelessness. Um, Lurkers is one of those horror movies that aims for steadily increasing unease, but misses completely and instead hits a steadily increasing boredom. 70 minutes of Kathy seeing a little girl who shouldn't be there and then freaking out about it is not as intrinsically suspenseful as the writers seem to think. Most of the movie ultimately can be summed up as nothing much happens and then nothing much continues to happen for a bit longer until we have a period of nothing much happening. Frankly, for a movie about a woman with terrible nightmares, Lurkers seems like it would be a pretty good sleeping aid if you were having suffering from insomnia. But... Let's move on to the film's second issue. The pointlessly complex, arcane, Byzantine plans of the bad guys. I mean, ultimately, all these people actually need to happen is for Kathy to go back to her childhood home so they can kill her there. Now, that seems a fairly simple goal to me overall. Just kidnap her, perhaps. After all, you're planning a murder, so you certainly aren't going to be worried about the ethics of abducting somebody. But even if you don't want to go down that route, perhaps due to concerns about the kidnapped attempt failing... Well, then there are plenty of other fairly straightforward cons that could be used to trick her to go back to the property. Some kind of unexpected estate dispersal, perhaps, or a claim that some old family items have been uncovered at the property and she needs to go collect them. Instead, the bad guys spend years, if not decades, of effort in infiltrating every aspect of Kathy's life. A, a degree of effort and complexity far in excess of what's required. Even the movie itself seems to recognise this, with one of the conspirators griping that Bob always makes things too complicated. We should have just grabbed the girl. Sadly for the writers of the film, pointing out that your script is nonsensical does not actually make it okay that it is nonsensical. Finally, we have the fact that Lurkers ends with the main character moving through her childhood home and witnessing people engaged in... Uh, polyamorous sexual activity, lesbianism, sadomasochism, as well as a number of criminal pursuits. And the correlation of these consensual sexual practices with actual crimes, including conspiracy to murder, is, I feel, an unfortunate example of a regressive 80s attitudes in which 
anything out of the usual mainstream would come to be tarred with an ill-informed and hysterical brush. Uh, witness the then-current satanic panic over Dungeons and Dragons, which various self-appointed crusaders accused of promoting Satanism, and even the game taught real magic. Now, whereas the main things Dungeons and Dragons actually teach is basic mathematics and the fact that four-sided dice are every bit as painful as Lego bricks if you stab not stand on them, um, you know, but that was that was the rhetoric of the time. And Lurkers kind of buys into it a bit. Uh, ultimately, it's a disappointment on pretty much every front. Next time, it's Sinbad, Sinbad, Sinbad. Uh, I'm going to take a look at all three of Ray Harryhausen's films featuring the famous fictional Arabian adventurer. But that's next time. Until then, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.